Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if this is your first time watching, it is a pleasure to have you watch this video. In today's video, I want to speak on the topic, God is preparing you for what he has prepared for you. The aim of this video is to get you to embrace the preparation process that God is taking you through for you to come to embrace all that he has prepared for you. I have four points to share. And the first point is, Time is your most precious resource in life. When you start to think about life, you don't have to believe the lie that you still have enough time such that you would come to a place of accepting procrastination to rob you of your purpose and of fulfilling your destiny. Because a lot of people, especially young people, come to a place where they feel like I still have enough time ahead of me. And because of this lie, they delay on walking into their purpose because they feel like they want to enjoy life they want to wild out and then let them use this youthful time and do all those things so that when they are old, they can now focus on life. And I'm like, is that not the devil trying to deceive you? Is that not the enemy trying to rob you? Paul had to advise young Timothy because being in a culture whereby when a young person stands up to do something, people will start discriminating. People will start criticizing and tell the person, how old are you? What do you know? Paul said to him, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, your purity. Paul didn't tell Timothy, be an example to young believers because you are a young person. He said to all believers, which means there's no age gap for you to live an exemplary life as a Christian. There's no age gap for you to be a role model as a Christian. Your life should reflect Christ. And that doesn't have an age gap attached to it. If you want to attach age gap, you would say, wait till you get old before you can then become a role model. So that we would say you've lived for so so amount of years. No, it's not like that in this kingdom. As you are where you are, be a role model. And through this, you would not let anyone despise you or try to shame you for following God, for serving God, for doing what you are supposed to do because Having to give God your time is the best thing you are supposed to do in life. Instead of thinking that the world way, which is, they feel like when you are young, you are supposed to enjoy yourself, go out clubbing and all of these things. They feel like that's the right way, but that's not the right way in God's eyes. God has a purpose and plan for you and you don't have enough time to even carry these things out. And time is so precious to you. You do not have enough time. The other thing I want to talk about in this regard is the fact that Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to live. But the question is, what do you want to live for? Do you just want to live and count time? I've lived for two so amount of years. Or do you want to live and leave an imprint on life? Which is your life as an impact. And that is the life God is calling you to live. We all love the Psalms. I shall not die. I shall live. But the other part of the Psalm tells why you want to live. To declare the works of the Lord. Let your life declare the works of the Lord. Let your life tell the story of how faithful God is. Let your life tell the story of the plans of God concerning you, which means you have prepared yourself to live out this plan. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you live and not die, but then your life is of no effect. You are just existing, which means the enemy has successfully robbed you. And Jesus truly said, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. More than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. The enemy's number one purpose is to distract you. Once it distracts you, it takes away your focus. It robs you of that focus. It robs you of your purpose. It makes sure that you are living an anxious life in anxiety and depression, whereby you are pulled in different directions. And once he can get you in this place, he has robbed you. And this thief have come into the hearts of the children of God and he has robbed them of their joy through comparison. He has robbed them of their peace through competition. He has robbed them of so many things that God has given them which they would live life abundantly. And you don't have to allow the devil to rob you because Every time the devil robs you of your focus, it delays you because he's robbing you of your time, your precious resource. Every time you find this act of the enemy, you have to resist him and know that your time is a precious resource in your life and for you to get to 
become all that God has planned for you. Number two, God had already prepared all he wants you to do in advance. Before God made you, he had a plan in mind for you. And he already prepared what you would come to do on earth. God did not just create you to be in the number of the people that are living on earth. So if you find yourself living like you are just one of the numbers of people on earth, it means the devil has been robbing you. He is robbing you of your purpose such that you will never come to embrace or realize or know that God has something in you. God made you unique fearfully, wonderfully, and purposefully. And there is so much potential in you that you need to discover and uncover. Because scripture says that you can't light a lamp and put it under a covering, a bushel. You are the light of the world. You are to shine. Why are you shy to shine? You need to know that God has already prepared for you what to do in advance before you came here so that you can come to discover and embrace all that he has prepared for you. And this is what you need to know. Before you would get to a point of doing what God wants you to do in life, you have to become who he wants you to be. That is the first place. Because I know that most of the time, when people think about purpose and what God wants them to do in life, they think about it as if it is something to do, like a career, a work, or a path. The reality is that it is someone to become. There is a potential that God has on you of who you have to become such that you can step into the purpose he has already prepared for you. You need to meet up with the requirements of the purpose he has prepared already, which means you becoming that person with the confidence and the character requirement to fit into the purpose that God has made for you. Scripture says we have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us, for we are joined to Jesus the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. In Jeremiah, God said to him, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Point three, walk in the spirit of obedience to God. Most times I would get to God and ask him, God, give me speed. God, give me good speed. We forget that the speed of God is actually predicated by our speed of obedience to him. God does not just bring speed to us when we cannot obey him to do what he says we should do. It is when we have speed towards obeying God that we realize and come to a place of having speed in life. We cause delay for ourselves when we disobey God or when we delay to obey God. It is our obedience to God that accelerates us towards destiny. And I would say this, that some of the reason that you don't walk in obedience to God or in the speed of obedience is because you have so much excuses. You have too many excuses of why God should not call you. You have excuses of why God should not use you. You have excuses of why God should not prepare anything for you because you feel like you know you too well. You feel like you do not deserve God. Your legalistic personality is not allowing you to come to grasp that God favored you. Everything you have in life is because of God's providence. It is not because of what you deserve. So why would you think you need to deserve God calling you and using you and putting something in you? And this is the place that we cause delay towards fulfilling destiny. And the other part of that is the aspect of fear. You are afraid of standing out. You're afraid of doing what God has called you to do because you feel like, what will people think of me? What if they disagree with what I say? What if they criticize me? You're afraid of the criticism. You're afraid of what they will think or what they would say or how they will regard you. And I was you at some point in my life. I just wanted to be behind the curtain and do whatever God wants me to do. But that's not the way he called me to. But I felt like I can't stand out there because I don't like being criticized. I can't stand out there because I don't like people disagreeing with me. And that was a dysfunction that God needed to walk out of me. Which is, I needed to come to a place of surrendering all of these fears to God and see what he would do with them. And all of this fear can be seen as the fear of succeeding. Because you know that if you trust God and obey him, you really succeed. But then you are afraid of the success that would come to you. In Jeremiah, the scripture says, O sovereign Lord, I say, this is Jeremiah speaking, I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young. 
For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people for I will be with you and I will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is Jeremiah trying to bring up excuses to tell God I'm too young. There are people that may be telling God, God, I'm too old for this. I'm too old for you to call me. I messed up. I've wasted my years. I've wasted a lot of time. But God says, I am the one that redeems time. I am the one that restores the years that the canker worms and the locusts have eaten. Why do you say I'm too old? Why do you say I am long overdue for this? So I will never be able to do this again. Drop your excuses and walk in the spirit of obedience to God. God will not change his mind on what he has prepared for you to do because it was customized for you. The more you delay in obeying God and stepping up, you are only delaying yourself from reaching towards the destiny he has prepared for you. Your effect in life is only living in the purpose that you were created for. Abraham understood that he did not have enough time. That is why when God called him and said to him, move out of your house, and go to the place I will show you. Abraham moved without knowing the details. All we need to do to obey God is go wherever he tells us to go. Do whatever he tells us to do. It is not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But it is the best. And when you come to a place of embracing the speed of obedience to God. You realize that obedience is the greatest act of faith on this path of heaven. Which is in your personal life. The greatest act of faith is in every act that you obey God. And with this I would like to speak to what obedience really look like. Obedience looks like Jesus. In John gospel it says. My food said Jesus is to do the will of him who sent me. And to finish his work. Jesus was saying obedience to the father is all I am here for. He humbled himself and became vulnerable. Choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was a perfect example. Even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Even at the point of death, Jesus was living in the speed of obedience to God. He was saying to the Father, not as I will, but your will be done. This is what I really want, but then your will above mine. And that is the place that you and I are supposed to get to for us to walk in the purpose God has called us to. God, your will above mine. Whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm seeing, whatever I'm experiencing, your will above mine. And I say that to be a place of total loyalty to God. Whenever you tell him, God, I am invested. I'm invested to everything you want to do in my life. I am invested to everything you are doing right now in my life. And I'm invested to everything you will do through my life. I'm invested to your will. I'm invested to your plans. I'm invested to your desires. That should be your anchor. Point four, embrace your preparation ground. You will not know first hand how God will prepare you or what medium he will use to prepare you for all he has prepared for you. And I said in point three, it is obedience to God that will take you to that place of embracing all that God had already prepared for you. And I would like you to know that God can and will use every experience and circumstance and situation that you see or that is around you to prepare you. God will use those things as your preparation ground. So your experience will be your preparation ground. Your circumstances and situations will be your preparation ground. Whereby God will mold you and shape you. Everything you go through is not wasted. And nothing will be wasted. God knows how to connect the dots in your life. From your childhood no matter how it was. Till you grow to become who he wants you to be as much as you embrace your preparation ground. Which is, this is not me saying that everything that has happened to you was caused by God. You cannot change the story, but it cannot define where you will go to in life. Romans 8 says, so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. This is so beautiful. Every detail, not one is left out. God alone knows how to connect the details. The details to us doesn't look good because it's like a scattered puzzle which you do not have the full picture. But I tell you that God has the full picture of your life and has already planned something for you before you came here. As much as I do not know the details of your life, I cannot tell you this is what God is making of the details. I cannot tell you this is what God is making of what you are going through. 
But I can tell you that if you trust God and surrender every detail of your life to him, he knows what to make of it. And he can use the mess and make a message. He can use everything that you've gone through to make of something wonderful that will align with his will. God uses everything and causes it to work for your good. You don't have to go about asking God, how are you going to do this? Because I need to know so that I will have consolation in what I'm going through. That detail will not be given to you. Have faith in him, obey him, and embrace the preparation ground. God can use whatever you're going through to prepare you and mold your character and build a new resilience. He can use it to build a new perseverance and patience. He uses it to make your character of something that shines like gold. Build your integrity. And let's take Joseph as an example. Joseph in Potiphar's house, that place was a preparation ground for him. Because it was in Potiphar's house that Joseph learned how to manage resources. It was in Potiphar's house that Joseph learned how to be in control and arrange things and keep things in order. The master left everything into his hands because he was trusted and the master knew that he knows what he was doing. So whether it's in your career or wherever you find yourself working, it may not be useless. It might be God is teaching you something in that place. That may not be the final place that you have to be. But God might use it to teach you, to mold you, to make you learn something of value that you would use in the future. And when I was thinking about Joseph's story, in my own idea was like, Joseph must have learned a lot about Pharaoh's palace from Potiphar's house because Potiphar was one of Pharaoh's highest ranking officers. So which means there are information and gist and intels that Joseph might have been privileged to hear and know what is happening in the palace. He must have been hearing these things and then he knows the loops and the things that are not done well and that is why when the opportunity came up for him he knew what to do exactly because he was prepared in the prison also think about the fact that god orchestrated him to meet the people that served pharaoh face to face they must have had conversations this is just my own thought he must have heard things or asked questions about what was happening in the palace how was things being run and with this joseph has a glimpse of what it looks like. So when God presented him with the opportunity, he was able to seize the opportunity. And all I'm trying to say here is that there is an opportunity ahead of you, but God wants to prepare you for that opportunity. You should not go to your opportunity unprepared because you will not be able to seize it. You should not go to your opportunity unqualified because you will not be able to seize it. Yes, God called you when you were unqualified, but he will not leave you unqualified. God has a way if you surrender yourself to him and make you qualified such that you'll be fitting for the purpose he has prepared for you. And with this, you can agree with me that there is no coincidences with God. It might be a coincidence to you and I, but it is not to God. Now, can we talk about David for a bit? Where was his preparation ground? David's preparation ground was actually the wilderness where he was tending to his father's sheep. No wonder scripture says of him, Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. Just like we do talk about Joseph from prison to palace. David was taken from the pasture to the palace, and that was his preparation ground. What happened though, David himself told the story when he met Saul. And the opportunity came up for him to challenge Goliath. And then everybody, even his senior brother was like, you have come again with your pride. You have come again, you this boy that does not listen. And David did not pay attention to his criticizing words. He went ahead to meet Saul. And when he met Saul, Saul told him, you are a young boy. This guy has fought battles all his life. You fought none. Then David narrated his experience to Saul. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and clock it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I will do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. Now look at the confidence of young David. He was just a youth, like we would say, but he had so much confidence because his experience Intending his father's sheep has become his preparation ground. That has become the place that he was being molded, he was prepared, 
and the confidence in him was built such that he could say the way I clocked the lion and the bear to death, I'll do it to this guy. And I want you to look at your circumstances and your situations with a positive outlook now. What are you going through? Can you see anything that God is using it to do in you? Can you see it as a preparation ground and embrace that part? Just tell yourself, God is using this to prepare me for something you may not even know what it is, but you know He's preparing you. All your experiences are preparation ground. Embrace it. Whether it's rejection, it is a preparation ground. Embrace it. It's hard to accept this. But then God is using it to prepare you. It might be you are having the heartbreak because God wants you to come to a place that you love yourself. Because if there's no love in you, there's no amount of love anybody can give you that will settle. All I'm trying to say is, your preparation ground is found in your experiences. It is found in your situations. Because God will use every detail of your life and weave it together to bring out the beautiful plan He has prepared for you. God is preparing you for what he has prepared for you. I hope this video is sound and you have found value in it. And if you have, let me know in the comment section which part of this video spoke to you. This is my YouTube channel. I am Uwe Mapan. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to keep up with what God is doing through this channel, through my life and through yours also because you are part of this community now as you're keeping in touch with watching the videos. Thank you so much for watching. I do not take it for granted. God bless you and keep you and make you shine. And I pray for you today that all that God has already prepared and planned for you, nothing will make you elude those plans of God for your life. God will make it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen.